Hello, my name is Aldo Fafai and I'm a general surgery resident at Cleveland Clinic. On behalf of all the authors, I'd like to thank the AHS for the opportunity to present our study where we evaluated the efficacy of liposomal bupivacaine on postoperative pain following abdominal wall reconstruction. These are our disclosures. Of note, this study was supported by a grant from Pasira Pharmaceuticals. The U.S. opioid epidemic has reached alarming rates, making it one of the most significant public health crises in this country. In 2017, two-thirds of over 70,000 drug overdose deaths involved opioids. Given this continued threat, clinicians are urged to seek non-opioid pain treatment alternatives. Open abdominal wall reconstruction is associated with significant postoperative pain, and treating this level of pain often requires high doses of opioids. So abdominal wall reconstruction is a field that is right for improvement in how to manage postoperative pain using non-opioid modalities. First described in 2001, the transversus abdominis plane block delivers local anesthetic in the neurovascular plane between the internal oblique and the transversus abdominis muscle. TAB block has been an important component of the multimodal non-opioid approach to postoperative pain control, with simple bupivacaine as the most commonly used local anesthetic. However, this drug has a relatively short duration of action, which limits its efficacy in surgeries associated with prolonged postoperative pain. A novel liposomal formulation overcame this limitation by capturing the active agents in vesicles that slowly released their contents, thus prolonging the duration of the local analgesic. While the efficacy has been reported for patients undergoing orthopedic, colorectal, and gynecological procedures, high-quality evidence remains sparse for patients undergoing open surgeries. The aim of our study was to investigate the effect of liposomal bupivacaine on opioid use after open abdominal wall reconstruction when compared with simple bupivacaine and placebo. This was a double-blind, three-arm, registry-based randomized control trial performed at Cleveland Clinic with a treatment 1 to treatment 2 to control allocation ratio of 1 to 1 to 1. The trial was registered on clinicaltrials.gov with a listed trial number. Inclusion criteria were adult patients at least 18 years of age undergoing open, elective, clean, or clean contaminated ventral hernia repair with mesh placed in the retromuscular position. Exclusion criteria were allergy or contraindication to pupivacaine, history of moderate or severe chronic liver disease defined as child PU class B or C, history of chronic renal insufficiency on dialysis, and chronic opioid users. On the day of surgery, at the end of a diesel the investigational pharmacy randomized the subject and delivered the treatment to the operating room. At the end of the myofascial release, the assigned intervention was injected by or supervised under direct visualization of the surgeon in five vertical levels, corresponding with thoraco-abdominal nerves T7 to T11 in the intermuscular plane between the transverse abdominis and internal oblique muscles bilaterally. Following surgery, all patients received patient control analgesia devices according to our standard protocol. The preferred analgesic was hydromorphone. When there were contraindications to this drug, morphine or fentanyl were used instead. In addition, as part of our enhanced recovery after surgery pathway, all patients received acetaminophen, gabapentin, and oral oxycodone unless there was a contraindication to any of these drugs. All opioids were converted to morphine milligram equivalents. The primary outcome of interest was the opioid requirements for the initial 72 hours after surgery. Secondary outcomes of interest included total inpatient opioid use for up to a maximum of 7 days, pain scores determined using a 10 cm visual analog scale, and Patient Reported Outcome Measurement Information System short form, or PROMIS 3A, as well as the hernia-related quality of life survey. To determine the sample size, we hypothesized that liposomal bupivacaine would confer a 30% decrease in total opioid consumption in the first 72 hours when compared with placebo. To achieve 80% power and to account for losses of follow-up during the study, the total sample size was determined to be 54 patients per arm.
A total of 174 patients were enrolled from July 2018 through November 2019. 10 patients were excluded from the analysis. 7 underwent reoperation during the same admission. 2 remained intubated for more than 24 hours after the surgery, and 1 was found to be on chronic opioids postoperatively. Of the 164 patients who were included in the analysis, 57 received liposomal bupivacaine, 55 received simple bupivacaine, and 52 received placebo. The median age was 59 years. The median BMI was 32.8 kg per meter square, and the median hernia width was 15 centimeters. There were no baseline differences between the groups. Here we can see the intraoperative details. All cases had polypropylene mesh placed in the retromuscular position and fixated with absorbable transfascial sutures circumferentially. Again, there were no differences in the intraoperative details and intraoperative complications between the study groups. With regard to opioid requirement, all three groups received similar intraoperative opioid doses. In the first 72 hours after surgery, there were no statistically significant differences between the groups in opioid use as measured by morphine milligram equivalents. Similarly, there were no differences in daily opioid requirement from postoperative day zero until discharge. There was a trend towards less morphine milligram equivalents for the placebo group. However, this did not reach statistical significance. Pain was assessed using the visual analog scale, where 0 indicates no pain and 100 indicates the worst possible pain. All three groups had similar pain scores at baseline. There were no differences in pain scores at any postoperative day or the 30-day visit. Similarly, pain scores assessed using the validated PROMISE tool showed no differences in pain scores at baseline and 30 days. The quality of life was assessed with the Hercules questionnaire at baseline and at the 30-day follow-up visit, with higher scores indicating better quality of life. There were no differences in the quality of life between the groups at these two time points. Our study is the first double-blind placebo-controlled trial evaluating the effect of liposomal bupivacaine tab blocks in open abdominal wall reconstruction. We found that liposomal bupivacaine had no clinical benefit when compared with simple bupivacaine and placebo, as assessed by the opioid use, pain scores, and patient-reported quality of life. Thank you for your attention.